Hi, this is David Smipolisky here, one of the co-editors on the Fits on the Go blog. I am here with Dr. Luigi DBSA, who is here to talk to us about his late-breaking clinical trial. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Dr. DBSA, can you talk about the background a little bit about the trial? Yes. First of all, I would like uh, uh, you know, to thank all the co-authors and the principal investigator of the trial, which is uh, Dr. Andrea Natale. As you all know, ablation of atrial fibrillation has shown always in all randomized trials to be superior to anti drug in maintaining sinus rhythm. But if we look at the study, the majority of them, if not all of them, have enrolled patients with normal ejection fraction. Uh, scanty data are in the literature with patients with uh, uh, low ejection fraction in the field of uh, ablation. If we also think about that in patients with uh, uh, low EF, we are very limited with anti drugs. We can only use the fetilide or amiodarone. Uh, if you be, we believe and you believe that sinus rhythm is better than atrial fibrillation, uh, basically we, we don't have many chances than ablation. Therefore, we decided to de design this trial, which randomized patient with uh, uh, heart failure and low EF uh, that were experiencing new episodes of atrial fibrillation and persistent atrial fibrillation undergoing uh, amiodarone versus ablation of atrial fibrillation. That sounds very interesting. What type of results did you see from the trial? Well, uh, the primary endpoint of the trial was freedom from any atrial uh, uh, arrhythmia, including a a atrial flutter and an atrial tachycardia at uh, follow-up, and there was a statistical uh, significance uh, in favor of uh, uh, the ablation when compared to the amiodarone, although uh, an average of 1.4 procedures, 1.3 procedures were required to achieve this endpoint. And what type of clinical implications do you foresee in the near future based on these results? Well, because also some secondary endpoints become uh, positive, and these are clinical endpoints like improvement uh, in ejection fraction, improvement in six minutes walking test, improvement in the overall uh, a heart failure and AF rehospitalization. Uh, I do believe that you know this study uh, will guide further studies showing that ablation should be pursued in this patient with uh, uh, low ejection fraction, maybe in in a, in a, in a more aggressive uh, way. What uh, what also came out from the study is that if you limit the ablation to the pulmonary vein, the results are worse compared to the results when you extend the ablation of the pulmonary vein to a more wider area to achieve uh, freedom from atrial fibrillation. That actually does sound very fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more about it in the near future. Again, here with Dr. Zubiase, uh, David Snapolisky here with Fits on the Go. To see more videos on our coverage of ACC 2015, please visit us at www.youtube.com slash Fits on the Go.